Hey there, and welcome to another edition of What Exactly Is IDW Doing? Starring the biggest trash fire on the comic industry block. Now this thing, it reminds me of a plague ship. I've said that many times, but if you all look back, you can see a viable company transform into a ghost ship. One that's not only out there set adrift, but one that's probably on fire with plague rats that have machine guns still teething on. Because something is wrong, and man, you don't want to get that kind of wrong on you. I mean, it's the kind that will never, ever wash off. Now, one of the people that has been responsible for some of that there is Chris Rael, the guy that was the former editor-in-chief. In fact, under this guy's watch, you see the comic revenue deteriorate from a good place from, say, 2014, where it continued to go up. Then it hits there. And it starts on this downhill trajectory. Now, after a while, if you really look at where that goes, well, in 2017, the entire company went from viability to losing $800,000. That's right. That is an entire year, negative $800,000. Now, if you thought that was bad, you're thinking, man, that can't get any worse, can it, Tug? Well, yeah, IDW said, hey, you know, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let me get this out. Why don't you hold my beer? This, this is 2018, and this is only nine months in. At nine months in, the company is at negative $7.174 million. Not only that, but you see this company go from around $6 million in debt at the time that I showed you in 2017 to almost $20 million forecasted by 2020. They keep taking out loans. They keep hoping to keep things afloat. All the while, you see decreased revenue within comic books, you see things falling off, and it doesn't look like anything's coming back. Now, I suppose at the end of all of that, you could say that the guy does something better because they lose less money. In fact, that was the way that they were spinning it not too long ago. Well, IDW, they didn't lose as much money this time. I mean, they just lost X amount instead of Y amount. Like, losing money is good. And losing less money, sure, that's nice. But you know, when you're talking about staunching the bleeding, yeah, you don't go out and probably run the same knife across said, uh, you know, embodiment there. Now, when you think about the guy, and you think about some of the things that happened under his watch, there were quite a few. It showcases a mindset that he allowed to permeate said company. It was one that looked at consumers, and it really it negated their impact. It says, you know what? You're not that important. Now, one of the biggest failures on Chris Ryle's watch was Aubrey Sitterson. And it all started transpiring before what we're going to talk about. He would go out and he would try to incense and antagonize consumers. But really, this, this set off something that started making headlines, made Hasbro uncomfortable, and on. You could see the guy go out on the 16th anniversary of 9-11 and say, Oh, good. It's self-centered now. National Tragedy Remembrance from people who weren't even anywhere near New York City Day. Ah, oh, isn't that good? And then he follows it up with, I'm catching flack for this, but as a guy who stood in the streets of Lower Manhattan, where he lived and watched it all unfold, F you. You know, because that, that's the way that you play. This didn't stop here either. Oh, no. Despite Aubrey Sitterson being told to back off that Hasbro was unhappy, this guy, he continued to go out to make statements on social media. He continued to attack consumers, calling them alt-right, Nazis, and on. That's the kind of thing that was allowed there. In fact, it was rewarded. We will find out in just a minute what the guy behind all of this, the guy in in charge thought. And what he thought? Yeah, he thought it was A-OK. -okay. He thought that the people that were complaining about it, that were not only wrong, but this guy here, he should be rewarded for that type of behavior. That's why things have been spinning out of control there, too. Because you see damage, and instead of damage control, no, you think that you know better. You think that every other industry is built in a different way. It doesn't have the same rules that comics do. But you know what? You're seeing the impact of that. You're seeing exactly what happens when consumers say, hey, I'm tired of this. I want nothing more to do. And well, 
the spin to this stuff, too, on the exit interview from Chris Wael because he ultimately lost his job. This is what he had to say about this stuff. And what's crazy about this is he's talking about the optic for the media. He's not talking about the optic for the consumer. That's the most insane thing here. So here's what he said. The story has gotten spun in such a way that makes us look like the bad guys, and it kills me that that's the case, because it all came about because somebody said things that companies that I don't own took exception to. You know, because Hasbro took exception to this, and also consumers did, but consumers, they don't matter. But continuing, but I and a couple of others really staked our jobs on not making a rash decision on having that person removed and keeping the book going and even rewarding that person with a new series. They rewarded the guy for going out and antagonizing customers. They did nothing. And again, you'll see exactly why that transpires. So continuing, ultimately, that new series didn't sell. I'm sure there's all kinds of ideas of why it didn't sell, but the fact is it didn't sell right from the start, and so it had to go away. But somehow rewarding somebody with a new book and not giving in to these idiots who were trying to put pressure on things got spun to being that we didn't support this person. Now, what's interesting interesting about this word idiots is I always looked at this as consumer however when you think about it what he's saying here the only people that he mentioned are actually the company that he did not own so the idiot it actually seems to be Hasbro and yeah I would say that if you didn't see this kind of thing and the proverbial tea leaves that maybe you know continuing to deal with them maybe that does make you an idiot maybe you need to see it maybe you need to see what they are and take your license somewhere else but continuing on here that I think is the thing that hurts because we did we supported him kept his job gave him a new book and it killed me that it didn't work oh yeah because rewarding bad behavior that's the way to go awesome stuff continuing on also at times I was going to go out there and try to defend it to tr trying to say no you're wrong and keeping the conversation going and giving forum for people to say more terrible things just felt like a losing battle. My entire time at IDW, I've approached things as the air is much fresher on the high road. So you think that saying that the people that were complaining about this, that they're terrible, that they're idiots, unless of course you are talking about Hasbro, you think that is taking the high road? You think that this sounds like high road? Oh yeah, it sounds like something there. It sounds like something smells. It's not fresh air, that's for sure. Man. And of course, this was the exit interview. Very, very telling about the corporate mindset. And well, the corporate mindset. I guess it just keeps on and keeping on. Now, the person that he's replacing here is Greg Goldstein. Now, this guy, I wonder, you know, since he's been in for a while within comic books, I wonder with this guy stepping down, is this a voluntary thing or is he uh, actually being forced out? Because what we might be looking at is a lot of people that are bailing on a comic book company that is not doing well. We've seen their Hasbro chief editor jump ship. We've seen all types of other people jump ship within that. We've seen all kinds of other positions cut as well. And when we look at the salaries and on, maybe that could be the case. Either way, this looks like terrible decision. So looking at this, you know, the company's former uh, CCO, editor-in-chief, and comic industry vet brings 14 years of experience. IDW Publishing, a division of IDW Media Holding, announced today that its former CCO and editor-in-chief Chris Rael is returning to the company as president, publisher, and CCO. Rael, formerly part of the editorial division at Skybound Entertainment, will be charged with ongoing creative expansion efforts within the company, as well as continuing to clo uh, work closely with partners and licensors. Greg Goldstein will be stepping down as president and publisher. Now then they go into the spin and on. They talk about exactly what he's going to bring to the table how it's been a thrilling ride and on, and now he's looking forward to that next chapter in his career. The problem with all of this is if they don't turn something around pretty soon, well, they're going to be looking down the barrel of a broken company because this company, it's falling apart. And it's falling apart fast. And like I say, 
the way that they have approached things, the way that they have approached consumers and on, it looks terrible. Those optics, they don't change. They revealed a side that has been allowed not only to continue, but to fester. We've seen it within the rank and file. As they go out, they denounce consumers and on, and they do this with this expectation that you, you're going to ignore it, and you're going to spend money. Because Remember, there's a mindset out there that says interacting with these folks, it's a privilege. It's not them that needs to go out and try to interact with you. Oh, no, it's a privilege to interact with these folks because apparently they think they're some type of heroes. Now, with this, when I see it, I wonder how other people take that. I wonder how you look at this move. Is this a move that is uh, basically filed with desperation? I mean, we're talking about a company that is not put any type of dividend within the stockholders' pocket since 2016. I'm telling you, if you buy stock within this company, you don't see any payout. It's in black and white, an IDW uh, media holding. You can go and look that up. It's very easy to find. Yeah, it'll tell you a lot of stories, and all of them are bad. When I started talking about this stuff, too, I had hoped they would actually turn it around. I had hoped beyond hope that this company would learn lessons that any other business out there could understand. But as I look at these decisions, as I see them go out and disrespect the consumer, disrespect myself and people like me, I just stop caring. I just report on it now. And I definitely don't give them my money. I don't think I'll ever give them my money again because of the things that they've done. And they've showed how much they simply don't care about the very medium that they say that they want to continue to uphold and allow to thrive. But anyhow, you tell me what you think about this stuff. Also, if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting the channel. Make sure that you sub, make sure that you like videos that you enjoy, and also there are links within the description that allow you to support the channel. Make sure that you leave comments, though, to tell me what you think about this stuff. I really like a reading exactly what people have to say within it and make sure that you show up for daily content because I'll at least put up one video but some days I put up multiple depending on what's going on and as always thank you for tuning in